Hey, it's Bob again here in Bob's basement. Uh, we have had this sump pump in here for many years, and the shaft with the float on it is starting to stick. It's getting rusty because, of course, it's a very humid environment. The shaft is stainless steel. We had one rod off before, but the rod isn't. So years ago, I had bought and made a float out of an aluminum rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this whole unit out. I got a brand new submersible Wayne pump, a good pump. It'll probably be quieter. We did, ha, used to have one with the motor above the water line because we used to have a wood furnace and it heated the water very hot. And uh, when it overflowed, it blew the pop-off valve and it would blow into there and that would be 180 degree water. And that's not rated for that. These guys aren't the submersibles. But now it's just cold seepage water. So I'm going to pull this out. Now, I've done this many times over the years. I've been in this house 35 years. What I need to do <clears throat> is I have to undo this fern co where it goes outside and underground and out to a, a swale, a drainage ditch on the side of the yard. And <clears throat> this should just screw into the fitting that's at the bottom of the pump down there, which is in the dark. You can't see it right now. You will. I got two check valves because I actually have a basement watchdog battery backup pump. And it does work fine. But right now we're not getting a lot of seepage. So I'm going to lift this whole unit out, swap out the, that pump for that pump. Hopefully, the only part I have to worry about is unscrewing the threaded fitting from the base of this old pump. So hopefully that'll work out. We'll come back when I'm working. So what I'm going to go look at first is if I have enough slack to lift this out. Now I have a couple hoses here that might get in the way. So I'm just going to back them up. Those are from the old uh, water softener, which we don't use anymore anyway. We have a float on here. Make sure I got enough slack. Unplug this old beast. Unplug the old beast. There's a float sensor on there for the backup battery pump. And I just got to make sure that when I lift it out, it's going to have enough slack to come up. And I think it does. So I'm not even going to have to move, change anything on that. Uh, everything's going to come. The battery power pump whole mess. I'm going to move the control out this way. So all I got to do, all you got to do is the wipe always says, is pull off that fern coat. And there's a bleed hole in the bottom so the water drains back so this should not have any water in it. So loosen that guy up good. Try it a little bit, walk her out, Oop. and there she comes. Now, let's see if I'm told the truth. Right. Let me get the pipe up between here on the ceiling. up between the rafters because it's so tall. So the only thing I need to do on this is I need to unscrew this and loosen this. So hopefully this whole mess will come on. Now what's the best place to do it? That's this foot valve. Let's try. I'm going to try it up here. These fern coals are great for stuff like this. Oh yeah, okay. Yes, there is water in there. I'm going to get all over the place. This whole pipe is full. 
I figure that much. <coughs> I'll just move some stuff out of the way there. My basement has turned into a storage room in here. I guess it's the gas line for the furnace. There really shouldn't be that much in there. I got my shoes all wet. Sorry you're seeing my back as usual. Try to get it. Yeah, all right. Straight down my leg. <laughs> all right. So there's that section. Yeah, I'm all soaking wet. Okay, so I didn't touch the foot valve. Now I just got to see if I can get... Isn't this fun? Don't you just love being a homeowner? <clears throat> I'm going to do this without breaking it. I didn't bother to put Teflon tape on this because what little leaks it might have, I don't think is an issue. We might have to cut a little bit out of that pipe because this might be a little long. Okay, say, out with the old, I'll repair him. I got a new float switch. I'll replace that float rod. Ooh, I'm all soaking wet. Isn't that fun? <sighs> So what you can see here is this was the float valve, the check valve for the little sump pump, the battery sump pump. It comes up to a Y and there was another check valve rate below there. So let's see how these compare height wise. And they are almost exactly the same. So I don't think they're going to have to cut anything. Hopefully she'll... I made it this way so that I could easily swap this out in the middle of the night or something should this pump break down. And as I said, I really don't care if it leaks a little bit down here. Because it's under where it's pumping anyway. I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. I don't want to crack it. That's a trick. All right. So, shall we set this in? I checked the pump, it does work. Comes with a convenient little handle. And I put some flat rocks in the bottom of this hole a long time ago. So the pump will sit on it. And I'm gonna have the tie wrap back the Too shitty water, dirty water. Back into the fur and coat. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a bingo right there. And look at that. Right back together, folks. Right back together. Of it. So I've got to tighten up. My fittings, I've got to make sure nothing interferes with that float. That would be the only key factor here with this pump. I'm going to spin it. i got to spin it this way a little bit. Make sure that it doesn't interfere with anything. The little pump is floating it by itself a little bit. But that's alright, I don't care. Man. 
tighten everything back up and see what we got. There's no water coming in, I'll have to just wait. And I do give these Franco's good tightness. We don't want them doing anything funny. Oh, I love to ride my bicycle. <sighs> Going to see Donnie Felder from the Eagles Friday night here in town. That'll be an incredible concert. He was the guy who wrote Hotel California, so that's always his finale. <sighs> There's a little water in there, so I think pump what's in there out. I'm going to check all these fern coals that are already on here. I guess there's no use to check the rest of them because they've been uh, on there for many years. And you know that kind of sticks. All right. Sorry. Woo! Slippery on sandals or whatever I'm wearing. Okay, so we got it down in the hole. circuit that I have over here. Let's see if I can reach it this way. That will put upward force on that. And it won't reach. I'm just going to have to tape it up here. Alright. Are we ready for the leak test? Let's see. Kneeling in the water, working on electric stuff. Yeah, that's always fun. Oops. I hit the other one. He just runs by himself. I must have hit the float. There's a little float switch right there. So it'll just run like a minute. There isn't any float on it. But that's sitting on a couple of bricks. It always screech, screams when it... There it goes again. It always screeches until you reset it. So I think we're good to go. It's just trying to lift water up and it can't go any further. So I'm going to come back now with some electrical tape and uh, we'll tape that up. Okay, so I'm going to fiddle around with this a little bit. I want this pump to set over that way just a little bit. There's a little kink here, but it's supposed to set level. So, I like that. I'm going to twist. I don't think they can hit anything anymore. I was going to twist on this a little bit, but it's nowhere near the float. The float's right between the two pipes here. So I'm going to leave it be. so it's on uh, arm's way. I'm going to clean the pipe off a little bit, but electrical tape is nice because it uh, it will stick to itself even when it's wet. 
So we're just going to find some around here if I can find the darn end. As long as it's dry and it's laying on itself, it'll stick well. So you gotta wind that around quite a few times. And I notice the, the little flow, and I have to deal on this wet floor. Ugh. Oh well, my knees are washed, won't they? Sorry, there's not a lot of light down in there. But I'm going to try to get it around that other little. It only has one tire wrap on it. I want it to. So there you go. That switch actually works. I don't know if it floats or not. Just tuck this back here like that. It keeps it out of the way. And I think I'm going to loosen this fern co-op and twist that pump so it can't spin around and get in front of that float valve, you know? Oh, shut up. Are we having fun yet? run some water in here, but it will come from the water heater, and I'm afraid it would be too hot. So I'm going to get the listing of the steps and goofing around. And listen this for a Bump it against the other pump, but it's I'll push that down so it's on the bottom. And then I'll tighten that baby back up. And I use stainless clamps on these. I always use stainless clamps around this water. Otherwise, that's it guys. Swapping out a sump pump, yeah, it was a messy job because the pipes are full of water. Now i got to let this dry up. And we'll, uh, this is just a drain for my plumbing. We don't even use that anymore, so I'm going to, that's another project for another day, guys, is to, um, See this whole mess coming down here, going to this water softener. I'm going to go up here somewhere and join those two together. When they put this together, they used uh, shark bites or something like that, uh, packs. So I'm going to cut over here. I've got to tie that. See that one pipe hanging down there that's disconnected? That's my outside spigot. Oops. <laughs> I gotta tie that all in. So that's cleaning that crap up. And I'm gonna put in an instantaneous hot water heater here soon. 
and get rid of this big energy wasting tank that sits and heats water all the time waiting for you to uh, put some uh, use some hot water so you go on vacation it's heating all the time now I try to remember to turn it off but what I'll do there is is uh, I'll just shut off these gate valves and uh, maybe I'll solder a cap. I like these unions though. I'll just cut them off. No, I'm not going to mess with all this. I mean, I could, I could fart around with this. I could pull these off and just put caps. But you can see I capped these others. I don't want to mess with it too much. I don't want to mess with that stuff up in there too much. You'll see it's a big mess. But we're changing things around. So I'm going to put that's the tub and the pipes for the bathroom sink go up here. So I'm going to put the water heater up in here between the joists somehow. And I've got to run a 50 amp 220 circuit like you would run for a range or a welder that size wire. I got number six copper but these instantaneous water heaters are amazing. You just as soon as you turn the water it's getting hot so if you put it close to your uh, your point of use you will uh, get hot water almost instantly. Now it takes a long time for the water in the shower to get hot coming from the tankway over there. Not real long but the sink is terrible because the sink flow is so low. So I'm going to put it closest to the sink. I'm going to put it closest to the sink over here. Okay, guys. Well, there we go. We made a mess. As usual, i got to let this all dry up first so I can get down here and sweep it up, wash it up a little bit. And hopefully we'll get some uh, uh, some water to come in here so we can uh, hear this thing run and feel that it's good. Then the next step will be let's, when this dries, I'm going to sand and paint the motor. I have a new, I bought a brand new float switch, a replacement switch. For, let me put the camera down here a second. Sorry about the banging around as usual. I got a brand new replacement float uh, switch for it, which will go right here, and it's exactly the same thing. And hopefully the wires coming out of here are the same. And that's really rusty. I don't know if I'll ever get the screws out. I might just end up trashing this thing or breaking this switch and uh, grabbing the things. But I want to clean all this crud off sand it up, paint it, that's stainless, that's cast on the bottom so that'll never rust and replace this nasty rod with a new one. Let's see if I got something I can get that off with. Alright, so here, here we go. I got little cutters over here. Just gonna cut those off. I got some little uh, claw type cutters. I'm just gonna. Boy, that's tough. Tough little SOB. I don't even know if this aluminum rod.
boy, those are tough too. Put a little slick them on that. These nuts are on the rod and it'll slide better, I'm thinking. Okay, well I'm gonna go put it on the floor. Let's see if I can pry between these two guys and get them to move. Because they really like each other apparently. <clears throat> Holy crow. Yeah, there's some corrosion underneath that. Look at the chalkiness under there. Aluminum still corrodes. And I'm going to set this about where the other one was. Well, i got to bring it up to the bottom first. Come on, baby, fit. Oh, yeah. Alright. And you move this down so this comes up that far. That's the switch. There goes a plenty. You don't have to turn off before it hits bottom. So for now, I'm gonna repair this guy up. I put tape on here, you see how well that tape's still holding? I'm not going to mess with it. Cast iron, perfect. It's got a bronze impeller, perfect. Um, that is really good. That was cut. That was cut. There's the good one over here, so I'm going to just stick the good one on the top. For now. Alright. Spray paint it, clean it, put the switch on it. I guess there's no time like the present to try to get these crusty old screws up here. Yeah. Hey, Phillips. Maybe flips. One over on this side is even worse. It's got like big rusticles on it. Those are Phillips. Damn Phillips. Worthless things. This is actually a soldering aid, but it has a prong on one end. And I like a little cutter blade on the other. I try to get the bottom of the hole cleared out as much as I can. Blade. I got a feeling these are going to snap off. I'm going to end up just smashing this thing off with a hammer. Where's my steel in here? I do have an impact driver thing. I got the tiniest handles Phillips I could find, of course. That's the down there pretty good though. Maybe I can get a bite. Of course the switch is in the way. Come on, baby. <coughs> Come for daddy.
All right, we're going to try something else. All right, so we got some. Either all on or a little. There you go. And if you're going to get vice grip boys, buy the real thing, the real vice grips. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start rocking this, and I'm going to watch. Cool. I think that one's going to come out now. But don't just grab onto it and start twisting as hard as you can. Alright. That one came loose. Pretty easy. I guess that's a 632, there was a one in here. What the heck? Of course, I've dropped it. There's one. Nope. It's an 832 or something similar. I've got to save this and try to find what that actually is. Watch any repair guy online, he'll show you how to do this the right way without destroying everything. It sure looks like it might be an 832. I can steal an 832 out of this light fixture to see. Worst case, I'll recap it and put something in it. I'm stealing my light fixtures right here. I know those are 832s. metric. I think it's metric. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's metric, of course. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, when you drop porcelain light fixtures, just tighten the screws down until they're snug. All right, well, that's all I can do for now. I'm going to let this dry. Maybe I'll come back and show you, but all I'm going to do is clean that up, put the new thing on it, clean it, put, fix the float, and we'll have a backup pump. All right, guys. Take care. God bless. Some pump has changed out anyway.